Do you ever wish that you could just like sweat in your brain? Like your brain just feels congested, you feel foggy, it's, you just feel like, oh my gosh, if I could just sweat in my brain the way that I could sweat in my body, I feel like things would feel better. Well, that is because that kind of feeling is real. Our brain develops a lot of metabolites, a lot of just molecular and metabolic waste. Okay, consider this for a second. 2% of your body weight is your brain, but 20% of your energy demand is your brain. That is a very disproportionate amount of energy in this one little hermetically sealed area of your body. Okay, when we use our body, when we use cells, we create metabolic waste, right? But normally we have what is called a lymphatic system that flushes that stuff out and we excrete it. That's what happens with our body. Like when we exercise, when we move, when we foam roll, when we do yoga, whatever, we are moving lymphatic fluid and it's flushing and washing sort of the extra water in the waste that is a byproduct of just regular metabolism. It's all a chemical reaction and then we excrete it. But the brain doesn't get that same treatment because the brain is in its hermetically sealed, protected by the blood brain barrier world. So we can't just like flush it out. It has its own system for that and we have to look at how we can enhance it. So this is gonna be first a neurobiology lesson and then a practical how to correct it, how to fix it. You have to learn the science for it to work. After this video, I want you to check out Thrive Market down below in the description. They are a big sponsor of this channel, but they are also very relevant. So in the world of like better for you products and just getting food delivered to your doorstep, they are the bee's knees. They are who I use when it comes down to pantry staples, when it comes down to like goods that I need for intermittent fasting, goods that I need for keto or paleo, all gets delivered to my doorstep. And I have secured a special link down below in the description for you to use. That way you get a special gift when you sign up for Thrive Market. And their prices are very competitive, a lot of times cheaper than grocery stores as well. So definitely, definitely check out Thrive Market and thank you Thrive for the continued support over the last four or five years. So the brain needs to get washed separately. Okay, so this blood brain barrier is built up of what are called astrocytes. Okay, these astrocytes, they filter so that bigger molecules don't come into the brain but they allow things like water and glucose and ketones, things like that to get into the brain because they can fit through and they're allowed to be there. But it filters out like the bad things, right? Well, the problem is, is sometimes it filters out the, the lymphatic system too. So we don't get the same benefit of the lymphatic system in the brain like we do in the body. But there is something cool. There is something called AQP4. And these AQP4s are, they're channels that can run through these astrocytes and run through the blood brain barrier to chaperone very specific things to get in there. Okay, so it'll allow certain kinds of things and water to get into the brain to what is called the parenchyma. The parenchyma is just sort of the interstitial fluid that's in the brain. Okay, it's just there just for functioning, for uh, holding electrolytes and allowing the brain to have you know, nerve and signal transduction and all this complicated neuroscience that we don't need to go into. Point is, your brain is made of two different kinds of water. The parenchyma, interstitial water, and then a very, very specific and important kind of water called cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid is not the same as the water that is just making up the rest of the space in your brain. Okay, cerebral spinal fluid is there for shock protection. Okay, so if you get into a bump, it kind of protects that but it's also there to stabilize the pH and balance the pH. But for the essence of this video, it's there to wash the brain. The one time we actually want to be brainwashed, okay? We want cerebral spinal fluid to come in and flush and wash the brain, just like the lymphatic system flushes metabolites out of our actual physical body. So this is where something called the glymphatic system comes in. Okay, now again, to reference, the body has movement to move the lymphatic system. When we move, we move fluid through those vessels and we excrete it, okay? But the brain, we can't just pump our brain. I can't just sit here and flex my brain like I can flex my arms. It'd be kind of cool if I could. But anyway, that is why we're dependent on what are called glial cells, okay? And these glial cells allow the proper flux, sort of flexing of these areas of our brain to allow the cerebral spinal fluid to move through the brain. What happens is the cerebral spinal fluid travels through what are called penetrating arteries. So they travel through our brain, okay? And then they get close to a cell and then they travel into smaller capillaries. But then when they get really close to a cell where they would normally start to wash and circulate that cell and grab metabolites and toxins and waste, it runs into another problem, another layer of astrocytes, another layer of the blood-brain barrier. So then we rely on, once again, 
AQP4. And AQP4 allows that water to get into that cell or close to it, wash it, and then pull it right back into the cerebral spinal fluid where it circulates and meets a component where it can absolutely flush it out into the lymphatic system. I know that's complicated, but basically what it means is two kinds of water in your brain. Regular just bleh, 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 brain water and cerebral spinal fluid that actually has a purpose. Well, they both have a purpose, but the cerebral spinal fluid actually washes the brain. So this AQP4 is unbelievably important. Without the AQP4 or expressing AQP4, we cannot get that cerebral spinal fluid in. Now, to give you reference, there was a study that took a look at what are called AQP4 knockout mice, where they took mice where they stopped the production of AQP4. They no longer had these specific channels, these specific chaperones, okay? They found that when they did that, they had a 65% reduction in cerebral spinal fluid that was circulating. Okay, so cerebral spinal fluid wasn't able to get to where it was supposed to go. Consequently, a 55% decrease in the removal of beta amyloid plaque, which is a huge byproduct of metabolism in the brain. Beta amyloid plaque is also what contributes to Alzheimer's. So, and what do you know? Okay, so if we are not getting this brainwashing, we have the buildup of beta amyloid plaque. So we need the expression of AQP4. Very, very important. So how the heck do we do that? Well, we increase what is called intracranial pressure. Remember how I said you cannot flex your brain? Well, you can't, but in a weird way, you can increase the pressure. If I were to flex my bicep, I'm increasing the intramuscular pressure. We can increase intracranial pressure, not by sitting there and straining really hard, but by working out and by having periods of sauna and periods of hot baths even. Check this study out. So this study was published in the journal Physiology, and it found that high intensity exercise, okay, sauna usage, and even very hot baths increase intracranial pressure by 18%. This increase in intracranial pressure creates more movement of cerebral spinal fluid, which allowed more waste removal and allowed the brain to actually clear it. So a lot of the research is just now coming out in the world of exercise, but we have to look at the big picture that exercise really is giving us a lot of the same effects that are being emulated by like a sauna or hot bath. So here's another interesting study that was published in the Journal of Frontiers of Molecular Neuroscience. Okay, and this found that exercise triggered a big surge in cerebral spinal fluid flux. So it found that glymphatic clearance increased significantly after exercise. But they also found that intense exercise improved what is called AQP4 expression. This means that you are creating more AQP4, you are expressing more of the genes, so you're creating more AQP4, creating more chaperones, more channels for cerebral spinal fluid to come in and wash the brain. So not only was exercise or sauna or high heat literally creating more intracranial pressure that was creating more flux, but it was also at a, like a genetic level creating more AQP4 that allows that to actually do its job and clear the brain out so you don't feel so foggy. What was really wild is when you really get down to the nitty gritty of it, this was not caused by any change in the blood-brain barrier. So this was not like a pathologic thing. This was purely related to the cerebral spinal fluid and the AQP4 expression. So when you're feeling foggy and you're feeling like your brain isn't working really well, it's just like you've been eating a bunch of garbage and haven't sweated in two months. It's the same kind of thing in your brain. Okay, you have these little teeny neurons and there's I don't even know how many millions and billions and trillions that there are in the brain anymore. There's um, tons, okay? And they have to do their job and they create waste. They're creating a lot of energy. 20% of your energy is right here in your brain and that's a lot of waste. So if you are not flushing it out, how are you ever supposed to get the job done? So exercise, sauna, high heat exposure, anything that's gonna allow you to create more intracranial pressure or to stimulate more of that cerebral spinal fluid to wash is going to allow you to think clearer, to potentially have better memory and to potentially flush out more of that beta amyloid plaque, which could be a very big problem. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.